This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by Movement Watches. TikTok. Get, get, a, get, a, get watch. a watch. It's good, good. Good start, I think. High energy start. <laughs> I don't know if we can keep up with this breakneck pace. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Should we slow it down a little bit? A little bit? Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, is also, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, my co-host, Nick Mason. I'm here. You both? Both of us are here. We're yes. both here. That's both right. Both of us are here. Yeah. What's news? Anything? Uh, I just did a Patreon bonus episode for our friends over at Do Go On. Oh, Do Go On. Yeah. So yeah. that's out now, I think. Oh, excellent. Comes Already. Yeah. Well, are you allowed to say the topic or? Uh, well, it comes when you, if you, you know how you say the, you say the topic. Sure. On the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. No, but I mean, like, do you, is it a Patreon secret? Oh, is what I'm saying. Uh, probably not. Yeah, it's the uh, the Great Molasses Flood of 1919. I've never he- heard of this. Neither but you were I. telling me about like the bullet points, and it is fascinating. Yeah, right. So if you're not a, a do go on Patreon, maybe get on that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ooh. It's a good pod- pod- podcast too. Yeah. Speaking of good podcast, Mason. Yeah. I was on Lights Camera podcast earlier this week. Oh, what's that where we about? talked about well, it's a movie podcast like this, Uh-oh. except with people from a different place. What? So not this room. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? I can't even imagine a place outside this room. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, we talked a bit about Black Panther. We talked about the news of the week, you know, the Transformers stuff and that. Uh, but I think the, the thing that people are really getting behind, there's like a, it's like fantasy football, but with superheroes and you pick your team and they kind of, then the audience decides. And the audience also had a team through voting who kind of... Um, it's like a, like a fantasy football draft. That's exactly what I right. said, Mason. Oh, I see. Yeah. And look, I'm not entirely happy with my team. There's a few wild cards in there for sure. Did you get to pick your own team? Yes. Okay. But well, also, once someone picks someone else, you yeah. can't get that thing. Right. So there was a few that I missed out on. Okay. One in particular that kind of <laughs> beats everybody else. But I did get Willy Wonka. Was it Thanos, so, was it Thanos with Infinity Gauntlet? It was that- not. No, because it wasn't... Um, it's just heroes this time around, but they do oh, different see, every right, week. Right, yeah, right. yeah. Uh-huh. But it's a, it's a great show. So absolutely everybody should check it out. Oh, what's yeah. the hero that he missed out on? I can't. I'll, I'd rather not say, Mason. Okay, that's fine. Tune in and find out. We'll link both below. Nice. Won't we? Yes. Won't I? You will. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I hope so. All right. Better let the team down, man. Definitely. Oh, one more bit of bloody housekeeping up top, and I'm not happy about this. <laughs> uh, we, had a, we had a big old chat about it before, and I, just, I stamped my little feet. You sure did. <laughs> but basically, Claire has entered uh, the Weekly Planet in the Podcast Awards for uh, the Australian Podcast Awards for, for most popular podcasts. People, the People's Choice. The People's Choice Awards. And because the entry was only $30 as opposed to <laughs> $350 for the other one that wanted us to enter, and it's by listener vote, I said, fine, okay, because it will probably help us in Australia, I guess, if we <laughs> ever need to do anything here <laughs> you're really you're really this you're really firing up this call to action let me tell you so if people want to vote people look, are on their phones right now they're just <laughs> they're just shaking they're like how do i vote you're so keen about this i want to vote do mm. it if you want to do it you can it's it's leaked below you have to make an account but there's, there's not much to it and then you put in a vote and then you and then you're on your merry way so what is it australian podcasting yeah something? i don't know it's linked below i'll link it below <laughs> i don't know the specifics i don't know the link but it will be there all right okay, so great. it doesn't Terrific. cost anybody anything obviously you don't have time, to time an investment of time yeah it would probably be funny if we won i guess that would so, be that, funny. so that would be yeah, It'd just, be funny because I feel everybody on the awards voting team would be like, who is this? What? Yeah. And that's kind happen? of why I'm like, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll fix your mic because it's well, While I'm doing that, why don't you have a chat? To whom? The, the listeners. What about this? I've done it. That's going to slip down again. Uh, you don't know what you're talking about. You'll never be president of microphones. Oh, come on. I'd give it a bloody good go, I reckon. Yeah. Can I be your running mate? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First bit of news. Already. Uh, Aquaman. It's not out till December. You know that. Uh-huh, yes. Probably. I knew it wasn't out now, currently. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's as far as my memory stretches. <laughs> but uh, it's been, it's had some test screenings. Okay. Uh, no spoilers. So nothing's come out of it in terms of who is Aquaman. Can I take a I wild mean, guess? We, sure. The the people who viewed it were ecstatic. They and were I think ecstatic. it's the best they movie the they've the ever best seen. Movie, correct. Uh, it was apparently it plays like Indiana Jones. The, it's got action better than Wonder Woman and Justice League. Mm. 
if you can believe that. And it's sexy like Indiana Jones. Yes, that's right. And Justice League, mm-hmm. which is the sexiest DC film probably yeah, when you think great. about it. Uh, and and par- yeah, apparently the action is just, yeah, it's like nothing we've kind of... Because it's a lot of it's underwater. We haven't had good underwater action since Waterworld and to a lesser <laughs> extent Deep Blue Sea or to a greater extent depending on where you fall on LL Cool J. That's correct. Yeah. But uh, Do you I mean, think his hat is like a shark's fin? Then you probably think this is better. <laughs> that's it right. Is. It is very much so. <laughs> so... I'm inclined to believe this more than others because James Wan made it. So I'm like, yeah, you probably yeah, could. Yeah, you're right. That's you probably true. could yeah. pull out something good. Yeah. So, well, that's the thing. It's com- it's competing impulses because one, I'm like, well, he did some fantastic. He did the Fast and the Furious movies, which were great. Yeah. Fun at any rate. Yeah. Uh, and but on the other fast hand, fast at any rate, fast certainly. <laughs> so that's that one side. But the other side is that we keep. Wanting these to be good, yeah. and then they're not good. Yes, that's the, the two competing impulses there. So, yeah. well, look, some are obviously better than others, Mason. Yeah, for Justice League, for me, I had fun with it. You know that he's More putting on anybody. he's putting on a lanyard. Yeah, it, it's a just Justice League lanyard. lanyard. Yeah. It says yeah. Melbourne all is all in, and I'm all in. It should say James Mister Sunday Movies is all in Justice League hashtag 2017. Yeah, that's what it should say. You you wanted them to like make a custom lanyard for you? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm wearing it. Would that have swayed you? Do you think you would have been? Mason, like- I'm swayed enough. You don't need to pay me off with lanyards when you see a great film. <laughs> that's right? true. Yeah. Do you see me keeping any of my other lanyards? No, oh, that's a good question. Have we got any other lanyards? I don't think we <laughs> don't have any remember. other lanyards. No, no. Yeah. They often they'll just take our phone and tell us to sit down and shut up. Correct. Yes. Watch a movie. Yeah. So, do you have you have high hopes for Aquaman? Yeah, for you sure. You have hopes for Aquaman. I have some hopes for Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. good. I, I I would love it to be to be great. And then because it only takes one film to kind of turn around a franchise, I agree, you know? Yeah. Because when with when Wonder Woman came out, everyone went, "Oh, this universe is fine. Yeah, this right, is great. Exactly. And then when Justice League came out, everyone went, no, yeah. cancel everything. And also, I had zero interest basically in the Fast and the Furious movies yeah. until seven. And then I'm like, oh, these are good. Or these six. Six or seven. Yeah. One of them. <laughs> and I'm like, these are good and fun and stupid. Yeah. So, all right. Did you see yeah. the one where they dragged the safe, number five? It's the best yeah, one. Maybe. Yeah, it's the best one. Okay. Maybe. Right. Do you, can you move your mic back just a little bit? Am I, I mean, you being are, too forceful on the mic? Yeah, if you're going to be president of microphones, Mason. Yes. <laughs> well, look, I, what you can do maybe is give me a little earpiece. Okay, sure. When I'm when I'm on the podium, yeah, pitching to be. There's so president many peas. Then it just went crazy. I know that's that, that's Mason. why I'm going to be bad at president of microphones. <laughs> but I need you in the ear and the earpiece. Yeah, you be in the control booth, and you yeah. can be like, "Stop saying so many peas." Yeah, when you're pitching to be president. Stop of, it. Of the per- 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 it's per- really unpleasant. Can you tilt that down a bit? This is Damn. out of control. I don't know what's going on today. Yeah, but I don't like it. What about now? That's a bit better. Okay, and then we'll find out. You'll fix all the previous stuff in post, right? You can't. The previous it's still doing it. Stop it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mason, you loved the TV show reboot from the nineties for I some really reason. I really did. It's a ca- it's a computer animated cartoon. One of the earliest. Yes. One of the shittiest looking things you'll did ever you see. Did you not like it? Until no, it was crap. Until was it? I don't remember it enough. Really it was always good. on like before I went it was to play basketball. Set in the city of Mainframe. Yeah, right. So did it also bleed over into the real it world? Never went in the real world. Well, Mason, no. we were in for a treat and a shock and a delight and a romp when oh, we yes. saw the trailer for Reboot 2018, the reboot of the reboot. Now you series. you weren't sort of aware of this, but you hadn't watched the trailer. No, until and I said just to you, now. you have to see this trailer. Yeah, and I did, and it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. It's really bad, it's right? It's incredibly bad. Yeah. There was a and moment- again, you're not a guy who watched the previous one, so you have not you don't have that much of a frame I don't give of reference. A shit. But yeah. I loved the the first one. I thought it was great. Yeah. Tuned in every week. Yeah. I remember there was a blue skin guy with sort of dreads. Yeah, that was that was Bob. Bob. His name was Bob. And what did he do? He was like a guardian of of the main of the mainframe. But where was mainframe? It was in a mainframe. Yeah, was but like, where was that in just like a It was probably in like a like a printer repair company that's what i'm or saying like is that, that what it was yeah we never we never found we out never found out yeah right, then okay. later they went on the internet it was wow. incredible yep and how was there that? was a time jump how many great. years how many decibels i don't know yeah i don't know <laughs> okay good anyway this looks like power rangers and vlogging and garbage <laughs> sure does so <laughs> and it looks like they spoiled the entire plot as well yeah and this is netflix yeah apparently so I mean, every once apparently in a while i watch a thing and i'm like netflix have too much money yeah yeah. yeah, I've been and watching this a bit of that of lately. <laughs> Someone just had an eye. Somebody who was a big fan of reboot back in the day, one mm. of my fellow reboot fans, yeah. rebooters, yeah, has bec- has become a vice Rebutees. president. Rebe- thank you. Has become a president of Netflix, and it's just like, hey, do we have a spare 
a couple of million bucks, great. Let's make a reboot movie. Yeah. They should have spent $52 million on Cloverfield and not made this. All yeah, right. <laughs> you know what happened? So probably somebody walked into a meeting mm. and they put it, they went, guys. Can you move your mic back more? This is oh, fucking what? crazy. Yeah. I think there you go. Uh, somebody walked into a meeting and they went, guys, mm. two words, reboot, reboot. <laughs> and then there was just silence. And they went, guys, reboot. And they're like, what are you talking about? It's like, okay, there was a TV series. It was called Reboot. Oh, they they rebooted a TV series. No, there was a TV series specifically called Reboot that was created several years before the concept of reboots were popularized. Were there... Did they ever reboot anything within the reboot universe? Were they ever like, we need to reboot... Because the mainframe's got a virus in it and it's a skull and crossbones or something and it's eaten all the megapixels. Probably, yes. That happened? Yeah, I think and they probably. Went, we have to reboot. Almost certainly. Almost and certainly. when I say I was a huge fan of it, like all things in the past, I only remember it vaguely. <laughs> so. Sure. One guy had a golden bionic eye. It was amazing. Wow. Well, isn't he all like bionic? Because he's a, he's a made not of bits the point. and bytes. Not the point. Yeah, I mean, just, that's not very special. He Do had, you know what I mean? He had stubble, but he was a he was a... Animated. Why did he have stubble? Because he went through. He, he got rebooted. Did he? Yeah. You don't know that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there was, was a moment fan. when I went, oh, cry check from the X from the X Files. Yes, that's where I went. That's where I noticed the thing. But mm-hmm. the rest of it, even the designs are bad. At least make it look like the old one. Yeah, it, it, just, look, it just looks like Power Rangers, yeah, yeah, but yeah, worse. Yeah, right, right. Okay, here's something. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't even have any of the. It had Megabyte, who was the villain in the original. Sure. But like none of the main hero characters. Who cares? Who cares about these new kids? I don't care. Don't you like vlogging? Do you think it'll connect to the original reboot? It'd have to. And then they'll be like, look, it's Bob. Do you think that'll happen? It better. Yeah. It better. It better. This thing you're definitely going to watch. I'm not going to watch it. (laughs) (laughs) Unless there's another trailer in like a week that's like, oh yeah, Bob's in this. Yeah, right. Bob and Enzo and Dot Matrix. Yeah, They're not all in it. I don't care. Dot Matrix like the printer. Yeah, but also like a sexy lady. Like a sexy, a sexy lady. lady. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of sexy ladies, yeah, uh, Rush Hour 4. There's always a bit where Chris Tucker has to go into a change room and he convinces all the ladies in a burlesque show that he's a fashion designer and he looks at them all naked. Yeah, right. That's some or all of the Rush yeah. Hour movies, right? No, you're thinking of the president. <laughs> oh, am I? That's, yeah. You're thinking of the president, the current president of the United States of America. <laughs> I'm also sure that, a pervert. I'm sure that also happened in Rush Hour, the French yeah. one. Oh, yeah, for sure. And they also had that guy that Roman Polanski was in it. Oh, and I what? remember at the time thinking, what? Yeah, no Yeah, good. because one of the worst blokes of all time mm. and... People only seem to recently remember. I'm going to double check that. I'm fairly certain he is. Uh, yeah, he's he is in yeah he's in Rush Hour three. So here we go. It's uh, Chris Tucker has confirmed this. This is what he said. It's yes. happening. This is going to be the rush of all rushes. Jackie is ready, and we want to do this so that people don't ever forget it. Like the third one. Like the third one. Yeah. yeah. Did you? And you to s- a lesser extent, the second one. And the first one. I don't remember the first one. Either, I remember the honest. first one. I'm, yeah, shipping containers and I remember that at the start and you don't touch a black man's radio and... Yeah, yeah, Jackie chanted a little dance. And did it and maybe he's fighting okay. a guy with a chair but he's blindfolded Yeah, and they think, they think that he's just some doddering little weirdo but then he escapes what at the prison he's, or something. Yeah, he slithers up a flagpole. Yeah, right, uh-huh. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, I don't mind them. From memory, I'm like they're okay. I, I think guess. The time, I think the yeah, time, for the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think the yeah. time of the Rush Hour movie is over. Like people, you can't even make a movie of that format anymore. You can make a TV series called Rush Hour because they did, didn't they? Didn't they do a reboot? Not like reboot, reboot. Oh right. A reboot of the Rush Hour TV Guys, series. Guys, hear me out. <laughs> Rush <words>. Hour reboot. <laughs> I'm really certain there was a Rush Hour TV series. I'm just going to double check that. Okay. Because I know they also did a Beverly Hills Cop one. Yeah. And a Lethal Weapon one. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's currently happening, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rush Hour TV series 2016. Uh, people ask, here we go. Is the Rush Hour TV show canceled? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> oh, good. What are, how are you, but are you going to believe that? What are you going to believe? The internet or the fact that you turn... The TV on to watch Rush Hour the series and it's not on anymore? Yeah, I believe all that. Okay. That's what I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mason, I yes. know you're excited for Jurassic World 2 slash Jurassic Park 4, 5. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Are you excited for Jurassic World 3 slash Jurassic Park 6? Oh, because they've already announced that there's a, yeah. 
a second Jurassic World yep. sequel and a fifth Jurassic Park sequel. Correct. The same movie. Yes. Which is coming out in 2020? June. No, it's six Jurassic Park. June 11th, 2021. Okay, right. A mere three years from now. Ooh. Uh, I guess they must think this one's good. Also, it doesn't matter if it's not good because these make money regardless. For sure, yeah. And they're all really good to completely serviceable. Yeah, it's not It's not that they have uh, decided this one is really good. Mm. They've just done like a, a, a costing projection. Absolutely. With a spreadsheet. Yeah. And they've gone, okay, well, this one. Is there one's, a Star Wars movie out that month? Yeah, this this next one's probably going to make this amount of money. Yeah. So this one after that will probably make this amount of money. And if we pack it in after that, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of making money, mate. Yes. Uh, Black Panther, out of control. Doing well. Better than Avengers. Better than, a, like, a, I don't know if it it's on track to be the biggest Marvel movie, which is crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's an origin sort of. It's a solo outing. Mm-hmm, Iron mm-hmm. Man 3 did really well, but that was off the back of Avengers. Yeah, right. This is obviously a character that people have been waiting to see, and they're really enjoying the movie Black Panther. Mm-hmm. So, here's to another segment of the show. Okay. I didn't... Right. What are we? <laughs> Somebody on Twitter uh, posted, and I can't remember who it was. That's crazy, though. Like, Black Panther's I thought you were going to say it's crazy that someone posted on Twitter. Yeah, that is crazy. But somebody posted on Twitter, get ready for another 50 Martin Freeman movies. Yes. <laughs> because uh, Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood and the wrong end of the stick. They yeah, got absolutely. it. They've grabbed it. They, They've grabbed it with it both out. hands. No, I think, I think Marvel have figured this out. It seems like they have anyway. Oh, yeah. Speaking of figuring things out, Mason and Netflix having too much money. Lost in Space is getting a reboot, and it looks exactly like Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> Guys, let me tell you yeah. four words. Okay. Lost in Space reboot. You mean the one from the 90s with Joey from Friends? Lost in Space reboot reboot. Five words. Reboot reboot, as in the new reboot series we're doing at the moment. Lost in Space reboot. Not the TV series reboot. Oh, wait. No, I'm... I'm ahead of you here. You're gonna you're thinking rebooting the original Lost in Space, which in a way we are doing. Right. No, I think that I quit. <laughs> I quit. I've had enough of this job. I'm tired of rebooting things. <laughs> Having a nervous breakdown, my wife's left me. Uh, but so this is I guess is this is a reboot of the classic TV yeah, series. Looks like a good cast. Yep. Uh, did you see any of the original series? Will Robinson? Yeah. I don't need you to name things. Okay, I just, right. Have you seen? No, I didn't okay. see. No, well, I that's mean, the thing because they may, I assume they have recast. It's a. I think it's a fair bet they've recast some of the characters like to be a different gender or a different I think ethnicity. it looks the same Does from it? what I can tell. Okay. I, we don't see everybody. No, we don't see Oh, the maybe guy. there is actually. We don't, no, see the, right. we don't see the wibbly armed robot, do no, we? No, no, he comes later. Okay, right. Well, maybe, they, maybe there is a. Where's the Dr. Smith? Where he's, well, he's, he's like, high. Well, ooh, from what ooh. I remember from the movie, which is the only thing I remember about this, was yes. Doctor Smith as Gary Oldman, who turns into a big old spider at the end. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. For some reason, he sneaks on board, and that's yeah, what right, causes okay. the accident or something. Yeah, right. Or okay. He's involved, and then he gets bitten by a spider, and then he turns into a big Spider Man, and there's a time jump, and then Will Robinson's in the future, and Joey has an Iron Man mask. I was gonna say it's the best part of down the movie. The, that's the only part I remember. <laughs> yeah. It's got that and Lacey Chabert. Lacey Chabert. She's in it. Heather Graham. Uh, William yeah. or the other Hurt. There was an Apollo 440. We're lost in space theme. Was there really? Yeah. The robot changes. Remember when Apollo 440 was the biggest band in the world for two seconds? What was their song? The Lost in Space theme. No, were there other songs? I don't know. I'll look it up. <laughs> Hang on. 440. Here we go. Here we okay. go. Is this, was this also a computer? Potentially. <laughs> so I'm getting a... You're thinking of the Omega 500. No, no. I'm, I'll stop oh, the no, rock. It says Omega 4000. That, what song was like, stop? The, the rock, rock can't, can't stop, stop the rock. Yeah, yeah Triple M always play. Oh, yeah. yeah or they yeah, used yeah. to. Yeah. They probably still do. I'm sure they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good on it. Uh, Lost in Space. Um, yeah, design-wise, it looks very Star Trek Discovery and color palette. And yeah. I'd give this a go. Yeah, but it also looks very throwback to the 60s. That looked fun. Sure. The suits did, certainly. And do you love space adventures? Yeah. Okay, then I think you might be on board. Uh, Unless now my, it's bad. Yeah. So they use their quantum drive to fly through the sun because they're going to go into the sun or whatever. It's not called quantum drive. It's called whatever the lost in space version of light speed is. <laughs> All right, okay. It might just be called light speed. Because what they were going to do, yes. and I don't know whether this is the original series, probably not. This is the Lacey Chabert version. Do you remember many details about this movie that yeah, I I've do not? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've also seen it. <laughs> 
probably saw it more than once. Yeah, I don't probably. remember anything about it. But so the idea is they go into space, they go, they travel for 10, 20 years or whatever it is. It might even be longer. And then on the other end, they build the other side of a space bridge so it can control light speed. So you've got a, you've got a point that you can fire to. Yeah, Because right. otherwise, if you just fire it off, you can go anywhere. Yeah, right. So because their ship's going to crash into the sun, they just fire it off to escape and they end up on the other side of the galaxy or wherever. They what a no bunch of bubble-headed that. boobies, you exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. And then Will Robinson has the, has a cool 90s future robot, but then it gets beat up by spiders. And then he makes the classic one with the, the head and the wavy oh, claw I see, arms right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Gary Oldman turns into a spider. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> You're really hung on the, up on this Gary Oldman turning into a spider thing. I think you have an issue. You don't think that that's something that should be praised <laughs> and remembered? Now, now that you've mentioned this... It seems that every time we talk about a Gary Oldman movie, you do bring it up. You're like that. Oh, that that we're talking about. You know, we're talking about the Nolan Dark Knight movies. And you're like that dirty old spider, Gary Oldman. <laughs> that it's asinine a- arachnid, <laughs> Gary Oldman. I'm sick of him. I mean, you've 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 let your bias slip through. I see. I'm yeah. just a big fan. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Speaking of being a big fan of a thing, yes. uh, Jessica Jones season two has a trailer. Yeah, for a, a lot of it, I um, thought I was watching the wrong thing because there's, there's a lot, a lot of, of from season one, old footage. Yeah. I guess they're keeping it under wraps. Uh, looks the same, much and the that's same. Absolutely, I really that was the last Marvel season that I really enjoyed. Yeah, right. The uh-huh. Netflix ones. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I hope this is hope this is as good. Yeah, yeah. Do, you think do you think she's going to fly in this one finally? Oh, bloody, she I better. think she might. Do you reckon it'll be weird though? Yeah. Do you reckon it'll be like a greatest American hero style flying? Like she hasn't quite got it down. Yeah, I think and she's in be- front of a crap blue screen. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. With very visible wires on it. Yeah. yeah. Like you can see the belt around yeah, her. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I think it'll be more like a bullet. Okay, like she'll be on. like, there's my destination. And yeah. she'll just kick off and just crash through a wall. Well, she kind of. She doesn't fly in the first season, but there's yeah. a moment where she just lands. Yeah. And it's kind of like, did she jump that? Did she fly there? Yeah, right. She might not even know she can fly. If, she, if she even can fly this version. Yeah, yeah. But no, it, it, good. Bring this back. Well, I still haven't, I still got to finish The Punisher. Do you think we're going to meet a whole bunch of crazy characters in a therapy, group therapy session? Oh, mate, I think maybe she's too crazy for the bloody group therapy <laughs> set, session. Oh, yeah. uh, you don't have to be crazy to be in a therapy session, but actually you do. Yeah. Well, now, yeah now that I think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Unless you're running it. Yep, that's and then true. you might also need to have a previous mental condition, which might help. Yeah. I mean, not always, but... So what you're saying is you don't have to be crazy to work there, but it helps. I didn't say that. <laughs> it, seems, it seems to be true, though. I didn't say that, All right. Mason. All right. Uh, Sony, what yes. are they up to? I know that that's what you're thinking, aren't you? <laughs> oh, is this our famous segment, Sony? What are they up to? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you... Come on, mates. Yeah. What are you... Uh, they their silver and black film has been uh, delayed. Don't know what that is. It's silver sable and black cat movie. Oh, I see. Right. I would have thought off the back of Wonder Woman. Yes. That this would be something that they would really push They'd for. They really. Would you think they up, went yeah. Black Panther? Oh, do we have any cat characters? Do we have any black cat characters? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Hmm. Well, black. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's it. Black cat. That's good, Mason. Well done. Thank you. Uh, I thought you did that by accident, but you you planned that out, didn't you? Yeah, this I've been playing it out for weeks. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, uh, it just got new writers, uh, but it's there's it seems like there's no release date anymore, and it's all very much up in the air. But uh, okay, that's kind of a shame, I guess, depending on what Venom's going to do. Yeah. Uh, but hey, Sony, what what are you up to? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I think the plot of Silver Sable Black Cat is going to be. Yeah. I think the Black Cat is going to steal some sort of. Yeah. Some sort of uh, heist. Some it's just going to steal some sort of artifact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, is yeah. that is that is valuable to. The land of Simcaria, which is where Silver Sable is from. What's Simcaria? It's like a nation. It's like a. It's like a weird Eastern European nation. Cool. What do they got there? Artifacts. Like what? Sim cards. Yeah, old exactly. Sim cards old Sim cards. Nineties. Yeah, exactly. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why would you want one just of those? Just old, old, just old mobile phones. Yeah. But why do you want them to recycle? I guess um, for the parts. No, this has got like some old photos and stuff on them. But you can't really see them because they've got like four pixels. Not on the them. point. It's just got some. There's some old concert footage on one of them. It's okay. blurry. It's eight seconds long, but it's like. Is it some Apollo 440? Concert yeah, it's, in a, it's an Apollo 440 concert. <laughs> yeah. And look, they just stopped. The Rock was playing, and they just got <laughs> some Silver Sable. Got some very some valuable footage, <laughs> and and she wants it back. All right. Okay, I understand. Mm-hmm. I previously did not understand, but you've now made you this it. crystal clear. Thank you, Mason. I know you're excited for Star Wars Han Solo. Yeah, not really. But I know you're even more excited for Star Wars Episode Nine. 
Not really. Yeah. Me neither. So and I really I, liked eight. We burned out. But I kind of I burned out. Happened, yeah. yeah, I kind of and also it felt very end game yeah, yeah, to me. Exactly. I was kind of like, I could leave this for a while. Yeah, I mean same. maybe by the time it rolls around I'll I'll care more, but I think that look I, feel I good. yeah, look, I think they've very carefully calculated the point at which people will be like, I'm not sick of this anymore. Yeah. I'd, wa- I'd watch another one, I guess, yeah. and then bang, you're back in. That's exactly so. it. I think uh, after Han Solo comes out in between that and um, whatever the nine is called, they're going to chuck in. They're going to be like, this is the new animated series. This is the new TV series that we're doing. These are some new video games because it looks like EA might be losing the Star Wars license, which they should because yeah. they're not doing a good job. No. And I say that as somebody who has taken money from them to promote the Battlefront 2 game. <laughs> But they are not doing it. Now good. they're no longer continuing <laughs> to pay you. Well, it's not You've even that. No, I was as soon as I played that, I was like, oh no, you really blew it. Mm. I just it's been they've had it for a long time and they've cancelled a game. They've brought out two, in my opinion, very mediocre games. Not everybody thinks that. Mm-hmm. And it's not even the fault of the developments developers because it's been cut up and microtransaction and this and that and whatever. Uh-huh. I just think other students... Do you remember like the heyday <laughs> of LucasArts? Yeah. Was incredible. And yeah. I know all those games in hindsight are not good sure. by a long shot, but there uh-huh. was such a variety of games. Yeah, for sure. TIE Fighter, X-Wing, X-Wing, X-Wing v versus TIE, TIE Fighter. Fighter, Rogue Squadron, all of these things. Correct. Uh, but, you know, then you got your first-person shooters, you got tactical, like, you know, like Age of Empires. They just skinned, yeah, right. they just skinned Age of Empires. <laughs> just yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's but true. it was good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, all this stuff they've been doing... Give me a point and click. I mean, if you're going to give me cance- a point and click adventure game, like 1313 was supposed to come out, but they cancelled that presumably because there was going to be a Boba Fett video game, yep. and then they wanted to make a Boba Fett movie, but then they cancelled that or whatever. Uh-huh. Just, I want some good Star Wars games. I just want some. Can I, can I, Mason? And I know you can go back and play the old ones, but I want some new ones, Mason. Uh you can't have any new ones. Yeah, sorry. Why not? Um, look, you don't deserve them. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Star Wars Episode Nine, which we're both... We're not going to not watch it, are no, we? No, we definitely... I'm, I'm sure when we see some of it, it'll be... It will be look, all... all I'm saying is if it came out tomorrow, probably wouldn't see it tomorrow. <laughs> I would probably have to see it tomorrow. Yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. I'd uh, wait a couple of days. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, it has a script and it starts shooting in July. That's where all this was leading to. Oh, I see, right. Uh uh-huh. None of that is surprising. It should have a script by now, and it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it needs to start in July because it be out. In the it needs to be year. released so, so people can watch it. Yeah, exactly. And if it's not finished, people probably want their money it back. Mi- yeah, exactly. If you, yeah. you can't show person a person half a film, and I don't mean like if it's only forty five minutes long or there's only half of the screen. Like either way, either way. Mm-hmm. Even if you split it like diagonally. Oh, if you it's did, a, did a, if you did a famous Star Wars <laughs> like. St- Swipe, yeah, but it wipe, stopped. stopped in the middle, <laughs> yeah. and then the, the remainder of the movie was just a diagonal half of a movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I, that's not. Acceptable. I'd watch that. Yeah, I probably would. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think there's ever come a point, and this is completely off topic and wrong? Oh, okay. Where you know how like every now and then they'll be like, you know how you loved curved TVs, and people are like no, because they used to be curved and we didn't like them, and then they were flat, and they're like, no, no, these curve the other way. It's like. What? Why? <laughs> right. Why, why can't they be flat? Do you think they're going to try another shape? They're going to round off the edges again? Are we going to get a round TV one day? Ooh. You know what I mean? Is it going to take up your entire vision? So you're watching a TV show, but it wraps entirely around your head like VR or whatever. I, I thought it was weird that that never caught on like that. That you wrap around your head television. No, like the like a VR. It's not good enough yet. Not even in a VR sense, but in a just you put it on, it looks like you're looking at the biggest screen in the universe. Yeah, right. I, no, I, I don't think it's good enough yet. I okay, really right. don't. Yeah. All right, and it's also because a lot of them, not all of them, you got to have a cable attached to your head and whatever. And I don't yeah, want any sure. of that. That's also, true. I don't want to watch a movie with a thing on my head. That's true. I, I'm happy to sit and like I can hold my phone up to my face if I wanted to. <laughs> it's and true. And I don't want to do that. Mm. I don't know. Am I wrong, Mason? You're always wrong. Oh, no, every time. Yeah, say it. Say <laughs> say literally anything. Hey, uh, I'm the best person in the world. Mm, wrong. <sighs> yeah, I've been living a lie. Wrong. <laughs> what? Yeah, so I am. You, no, you're living your you're living your truth. <laughs> okay, good. As a man who's wrong all the time. <laughs> anyway, Star Wars. Get excited, Mason. I'm not yet. <laughs> It's just hit me right now. I'm just not that excited no, right now. I felt this way after nine. Came there are out, only though. few individuals that can be excited Eight, about Star so. Wars all the time. Yeah, exactly. Steel and Wars. if you are, go listen to Steel Wars. It's great. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah. He's excited what, every though, week. Uh, Rebels, really good episode last week. Oh. If you be like, I'm kind of, I'm hot and cold on it, but yeah. really good. I don't think it's out yet, but uh, Steel Saunders over at the Steel Wars podcast. Oh, yeah. Just uh, did an interview. Sizzle. Yeah, but Steel Wars Sizzle just did an interview, I believe, with our mate Ben Mendo Mendelssohn. He told me that months ago and I kept it a secret because <sighs> I forgot. Nice. Wait, did he do the interview months ago? No, no, he was lining it up. Oh, yeah. nice. So okay. that's really exciting. Yeah. That's his biggest guest yet. Other that's than, right. Other than you, Mason. <laughs> it's very true, yeah. It's a big gap between you and Mendo, isn't it? Like there's a lot in between. Do you mean physically like an ocean? Yeah, like an ocean, sure. But I mean like, like in terms of achievements and success. There's Ben Mendo Mendelssohn. Yep. And then if you, like, I don't even know where you'd even look to find you and what else. Like, because there's so much in between. Like an ocean. Yeah, an ocean, but also like, again, a list of achievements and skills and abilities and like, probably like popularity, handsomeness. He'll get there one day. (laughs) Good on you, Mendo. Keep plugging away, mate. Good on you. Sure, yeah. He's popping up in everything. He's in Ready Player One. Yeah. He's in the new Robin Hood movie, apparently. Oh. Yeah, that's exciting. As an evil sheriff. Probably the sheriff. Probably the sheriff, Do you think he'd be Robin Hood? No. He's too old. Yeah. He'd look good in a... What's the thing a sheriff would wear? He'd look good in a fry tuck fat suit. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Uh, holding a stick. Yeah. Okay. Mason, uh, in some news that is the least shocking news that has ever occurred, uh, Joss Whedon has left uh, Batgirl at Warner Brothers. Left or been pushed? Well, he's officially what he said. Batgirl is such an exciting project and Warner Brothers slash DC, such colla- they're such collaborative and supportive partners that it took me months to realize I didn't have a story. Uh, we didn't send a statement. I'm grateful to Jeff and Toby and everyone who was so welcoming when I arrived. And so I understand when I, uh, is there a sexier word for failed? This was always going to happen. Yeah. As soon as that <laughs> right. stuff came out yeah. about his wife, it yeah. was just never, or ex-wife, it was yeah. just never going to. I I completely understand why I think he's been pushed. Like he probably hasn't cracked the story either or he had, there's this, but I don't think whatever he was going to make, I don't think they were ever on board after this came out. Cause then no. he'd have to sit in press junkets and people would be like, do you think you're the right person to be doing a female? Let's be here. Yeah, yeah. After your track record, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But yeah. also, and it would, it, it, I think that also at the very least, like every media outlet would go in and they'd be like, sign this paper, piece of paper yes. saying you wouldn't, you won't ask him about yeah. all the stuff he's done. He did, you know. Yeah, his, exactly. His decades long track record of infidelity to his wife or whatever. Yeah. That's and it. then they'd be like, oh. what am I even doing here? Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Well, he didn't do any press for Justice League. Yep. Um, kind of off the back of that. And also because it was shit. I mean, I didn't think so. Some people did. Yeah. Uh, but uh, also, interestingly, when, uh, oh, we should do a Justice League check. Oh, yeah. It was fine. It was totally fine yeah. and completely serviceable and forgettable. And I can't wait to watch it again, which I have. I can wait. Is it out <laughs> yet on Blu-ray or something or digital? I don't think so. I think it might be. Okay. Either way, I can certainly wait <laughs> to see it again. Would you say yeah. that you had fun with it? Yeah, man. Okay. All right. Didn't you have fun with it? No. Remember that bit where Superman just beat the shit out of Steppenwolf? That was pretty good. I know people were like, that's not fun when Superman turns up. And I'm like, no, that is fun. It's just not, watching no, Superman it? just knock a guy about. Nah, that's no, great. It's, it's no good. Yeah, fair enough. I think it's no good. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Zack Snyder. Uh, there might there may be some beef between Zack Snyder and Joss Whedon because Ooh, hello. when somebody made the comment that Steppenwolf is, a, is one of the worst villains of all time on Twitter, Joss Whedon... Uh, he's pretty quiet on social media. He was around this time. He liked that tweet, even though <laughs> well, he uh, made that movie. Wait, uh, so it wasn't an accidental like? No. Okay, well. I don't think so. Well, he didn't remove it. or he okay. made, I don't know. Maybe he did remove it. Yes. I don't know that. But uh, And then Zack Snyder apparently liked a post saying that Joss Whedon was leaving and somebody else who was at DC also wow, this liked is a, a this is a very thing. passive-aggressive oh, director so passive war, aggressive, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So... That's uh, that's where we're at with that. But according to, I've got some. They're more not news. even tweeting mean things at each other. No, no. Just liking mean things that other people have said about the other one. Correct. Maybe by accident, also. Yeah, for sure. You don't really know. Well, I guess there's a certain amount of plausible deniability there. Yeah, definitely. For the first one, at least. For the, the second first one, one yeah, not at all. What are you up to? According to Variety, so you can take this to the bank, Mason. Okay. Take it to the bank and say, "No change required. Please keep this in a, in your best safe." Is that what happens at the bank? I don't know. I've never been in or out of a bank. Okay. <laughs> I'm always in the doorway. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, okay. You just can't commit. You just. <laughs> what, what do you do with your buddy? Yeah. You know, uh, according to Variety, uh, Whedon was looking to adapt 
the million dollar debut of Batgirl. So you're going to say the million dollar duck. <laughs> <laughs> one of your all-time favorite movies. Yeah, and one of my greatest pranks, Yeah, which I will not <laughs> detail here, but I have before. Uh, that's the story uh, title of Detective Comics Volume 1, number 359. It's the debut of Batgirl in the comics. The issue revolved around the youngster suiting up for the first time and aiding Batman and Robin as they took down Killer Moth and his Moth Men. Everybody assumed, including us, that because this universe is 40 years after Bruce Wayne has been Batman or however, however long he's been yeah, grinding right. away at it. He's just got no cartilage in his knuckles or his yeah, knees right. anymore. That this was this universe was post-killing joke. And this this universe yes, this this universe all the things we've seen in the comic books mm. to this point have happened. Yeah. Like a lot of memorable stuff and that we're we're at the modern era. And yeah. so there's a lot of there's it, it's not a movie, it's not a it's not a universe like the MCU where we're seeing the origin stories happen in real time. It's a universe where those origin stories are happening and we're jumping in in the middle. Yeah, exactly. Which is a great point of difference, but I guess not. Because <laughs> there's already a dead Robin. There's already been a dead Superman. <laughs> we're very far along. Also, I, I, for me personally, and maybe you feel the same way, but all the stuff after Barbara Corden recovers from being shot by the Joker is her most interesting stuff. Yes. That's when the character really comes into her own. Either yeah, for through sure. Oracle and then return as Batgirl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's got a great comic run. Who's doing the current comic run? Or the one that, maybe not the current one, the one that you I were. don't know. But it was good, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, I thought they were going to go that direction. Gail Simone? It's probably yeah, Gail, it Simone. Gail Simone. She's done yeah. some great night, but I believe she's put her hand up on Twitter saying, I'd write a Batgirl movie. Uh, I think it was, yeah, well, also, speaking of. Oh, Roxanne Gay Roxanne as well. Gay has said, uh, hey, DC Comics, I can write your Batgirl movie, no problem. And Michelle Wells, who works for DC, says, if you're serious, contact me. This is my email. And Roxanne says, yes, I am serious. I will email you. And this is kind of something we don't really see much. I know, because it's mostly just people passive-aggressively liking me <laughs> tweets about each other. Yeah. There's much less of this positive communication. I just mean in terms of there's not a hell of a lot of crossover between comic book creators and script writers. No, that's true. Like they often consult, and obviously Jeff Johns has a big hand in the DC universe. Or does he? Yeah, I right. don't really know. Yeah. And there's there's often a lot of... Okay, well, this visual stuff looks great in the yeah. comic books. These concepts, let's borrow them. Yeah, and we'll get a, our own script writers or whatever to uh-huh. kind of flesh this out. But I think this could be a really interesting uh, way forward for DC if they're going to borrow more heavily from the comics. Because, look, Mason, as much as we all love Justice League and we did, they're really fucking things up right now, man. <laughs> yeah. So I think maybe try something like this would be a good way to go. Also, I want to see a Batgirl movie. Me too. And I'm glad he left. Me too. Quite, like I think there's, I think there's a, a better person for this for this movie than he. Yeah. Than him. Yeah. Mm. And I like. Look, I've liked a lot of the stuff that he's done in the past, but this is not the time for a Joss Whedon back. No, movie. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Having mm. having read some of the again the Joss Whedon Wonder Woman script. Hmm. He's only got a couple of gears, Josh Whedon, I guess. And is it, in some, is it, a, is it a barefoot brunette girl uh, who's quite fragile but also quite dangerous? Correct. Okay, that's good. right. Yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to say he's only got a couple of gears. Yeah. And sometimes they work, and sometimes sometimes, sometimes it works yeah. in context, and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, and that Wonder Woman script is not yeah not good from what I've read of it. Yeah. Mm. But th- then again, that was like ten years ago, and maybe That's they true. were like. Right, we need you to write this particular type of film. That's Maybe true. Th- we don't. We you don't have know. one hour to, yeah, right. to write a two hours worth of script. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So there you go. So I really hope this does move forward, uh, but we'll see. Same, Mason. Before we talk about the movie we're talking about today, oh yes, uh, Movement Watchers have been kind enough to sponsor this episode, and they're able to do that because they just went from crowd f- crowd funded kids working out of their living room. Just like us, Mason. That's right. A couple of kids, a couple of young bucks. <laughs> uh, so every now and then, I think I've said this before to you, I'll catch myself in the mirror at a shop and I'm like <laughs> pushing a pram. I've got like a dog on my arm. I've got like a hat. And like a- you're holding a dog in your arm. <laughs> yeah, arm. Yeah. Just over the shoulder like it's a carton of beer. <laughs> That's it. And I've got like gym gear on or whatever. Uh-huh. So I'm wearing shorts and runners and a, and a, and and a top that says Puma or something. And I, you're not going to say it, but the top... That says Pumeron is also covered in vomit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Some yeah, of it is right. your baby, some of it is yours. Yeah. And so I just catch myself in the mirror of a shop and I'm just like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Just so to that's... be clear, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, in the past year, though, they've uh, introduced a ton of new watches to their collection for both men and women, mm-hmm. but also expanded to sunglasses and fashion forward to bracelets 
for her. So there you go. What are some of your favorite watches that you bought recently? You get like three a week. Where are you at? <laughs> I get so Still many. Still mine, mate. I don't, even know, yeah. I, I don't know what this one is called, but what's that one called? That's a chrono. Yeah. You got a chrono there. That's I a good it, one. I like it's it. Right here. Yeah, it's nice, yeah. Like the chronos, like the voyages. Like the voyages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any bracelets? I don't have any bracelets. Why not? I was only vaguely where they had them, but I'll look into it. Okay, you better, Mason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, they also their their designs work because they 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 look good, Mason, by keeping it simple, and they uh, it's not like an <laughs> Apple Watch or whatever where it, it blows up and tells you messages and shit. It's just a watch. I feel you've, it's a nice you've gone off message. No, no, this there. is what it says here. Oh, okay, right. Watches don't tell you how many steps you've taken or blow your wrist up with text messages, which to me would be really irritating. Oh, for sure. So yeah. I'm glad it doesn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. But man, I enjoy them a lot and they they are, and this is quite rare for most watches, I think, is versatility. Yeah. Like it's a, it's hard to find a watch and go, okay, well. This it's is not watch. hard to find a watch, it, Mason. Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's hard to find a good watch, I think that's, you meant to say, oh, Mason. Oh, 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 I think that's a, what you meant to mate say. Your body, mate, your body got me. I'll tell you what, you got me. Right. <laughs> but it's difficult to get a watch that is that you can wear with like a t-shirt and jeans or you can wear with like more dressy stuff. Sure. You can wear with a suit or what have you. And I think there are- Like there if you're are, going to the Australian Podcast Awards. If I'm going to the Australian <laughs> Podcast Awards because I've won whatever a dumb award <laughs> that, that we, we got there. You know? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. But it's, yeah. it's difficult to find that in a lot of cases. Yeah. And if you just want, if you're like, listen, I just want one watch that's nice and versatile and yeah. I can wear it in a lot of different situations. I reckon movement has a lot yeah. of options for you. I tell you what, Mason. Yeah. And watches start at just $95. That's and a at bargain. A dispa- at a department store, because there's a bunch of middlemen and markup and shit, you're looking at a 400 to 500 bucks for the same quality of watch. Mm. And they're a good quality, Mason. Listen to this. Wow. Listen to that table. You're smashing that into a side of a mountain. Yes, I am. And it's still in perfect condition. <laughs> uh, movement figured out a way, uh, that, like I said, to cut out the middleman. So the retail markup is gone. They've got classic design, quality construction, and the style is minimalized. You can actually get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash weeklyplanet. See why MVMT, or movement, keeps growing, Mason. Check out their expanding collection. Oh, they have, a new, they have a new model called the Revolver. It's the very, Revolver? The, like no, a lion? Yeah, like a Revolver. Revolver. And the Revolver, it's like a like very minimalist, looks oh, really that nice. Is they, very minimalist. They have one. Here's, here's a little recommendation. This might be the next on my list. They have one called the Gotham. It's very nice. It's got a grey leather band, dark, ah. sort of dark grey face on it. Looks real Interesting. nice. Interesting. Looks okay. real nice. That's mvmt.com. Well, I've got one sale from this ad. I'm in the middle of a bloody <laughs> All right, promo do it. code, do Mason. The, do the thing. Do your promo code. Mvmt. It's our promo code. I oh, yeah, and it. also I'm going to use it <laughs> shortly, so I should probably listen when you say it. Mvmt.com slash weekly planet. Join the movement. Movement. Mason, it's been a hell of a year for uh, Netflix films and TV shows. In what it? sense? Well, some of them have been good. Mm-hmm. Some of them have been Cloverfield. Name a good one. It's probably too much dead space there. Uh, let's move. Let's move on. Wait a minute. No, Gerald's Game, but I think that might have been last year. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, there's been some good TV shows. Yeah, true. Uh, the latest one though, movie is Mute. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's Duncan Jones' latest, who is behind Warcraft, which is <laughs> yes. okay as a film. Uh huh. It was all right. I mean, it's not great, but you know, I think it got kicked more than it probably should have. I think it got kicked the correct amount. Okay, good. Uh, and also Moon and Source Code, both of which are incredible. Very good. Um, this one though, uh, it's it's Blade Runner, sort of. Yes. <laughs> Okay. That's not the name of it. It's called Mute. It's called Mute. Yep. I said that, didn't I? No. I'm fairly certain I did. Okay, then. I'm not that certain. You'll figure it out in the, in the edit. I won't. Okay. Uh, but should, I want, should we just go all spoilers on this? I mean, it's on Netflix. Yeah, look, if you want to see it. Yeah, you absolutely can. Give it five minutes, see if you like it. See if you like it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you might not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. But uh, I'll tell you what, though. Um, Mason, what do you think the story was? Oh, geez. All right, hang on. It's a bit of a tough one, this one, isn't it? <sighs> All right. So there's a man named Leo. Yep. He's a he's a he's a he's an Amish bartender. Yes. Uh, and when he was a kid, he lost his voice because of some sort of boat propeller accident. Yeah. He we only see neck. we see in flashback. He didn't like it. Uh, and because of his Amish upbringing, his his parents would never let him get the surgery to regain his voice. So he's a mute man. He's a mute man. Uh, so he had to change his name to Mute, didn't he? No. That's you think of something else. Oh. Yeah. I'm thinking of the mute button on the TV. You are thinking of that, yes, correct, yes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, And let's see. And then he's in love with a lady. But then. And it's the future. But is it? No, it is. It is, yeah. (laughs) Then 
something happens. Something happens. And then he's on a mystery quest. He's on a mystery quest. It's a bit detective it's noir. It's a bit detective noir. It's very noir, it's I think. It's a bit Blade Runner. Yeah, it's very noir in the sense that everybody in this movie is a horrible person except him and probably still, still him. still kind of a horrible person. I like Duncan Jones a lot as a filmmaker and as a person. Okay. And it pains me to say this, yes. but I really did not like this at all. Very interesting. Yeah. And okay. Because I, I, I'd heard it wasn't good, but because I, like, I saw Rotten Tomatoes, but I'm like, fuck that. I don't, yeah. You know, but then I heard from other people that it, that it, that it was quite good, but I just couldn't get what, into What about it you didn't like? Okay. Let's see how far we can go into this without spoilers, Okay, maybe. first of all... Uh, why is it set in the future? It doesn't. It could need be set to at be. any time. It could couldn't be set it? absolutely yeah. anywhere. Like the uh-huh. future stuff that they work into it isn't interesting. It is so close to being the modern day, yeah. that it really doesn't matter. It's set in the future. They have, they have like a drone food deliveries, yeah. and everything is a screen. Well, that's what I'm talking Everything's about. A touch screen, but and otherwise. there's like there's like robot legs, but we're pretty close to that now. Like uh-huh. you know what I mean? Or you we've know, got robot prosthetic. We've got robot door opening dogs. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Prosthetics. There's like an underwater dolphin TV when you're swimming. I'm like, we could do that now if we wanted to. Sure. But the very rich undoubtedly have that yeah, already. I'm sure they do. But none of this, and it all looks fine, but yeah. I'm just like, well, this is pointless. This could have been set 100 years ago or 100 years from now or any time when people had guns. It could have been set like at the height of the, Ar- the, the, the Amish kind yeah. of... The Amish Dynasty? Wars. Yeah, the yeah. Amish Wars. The Great sure. Amish Wars. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm, that took so the many Ezekiels from us. I like um, Stellan Skarsgård, whichever one it is. It is Stellan Skarsgård, yeah. Is he or is that his dad? Maybe it's Peter Skarsgård. Maybe Peter Skarsgård. Let's look it up. One of them. It's one of the Skarsgård. I one like Skars- him generally. I, I like I- Mr. Skarsgård. Yeah. Please, Mr. Skarsgård was my father's name. I didn't think, because the role called for him to be mute, like the character's name. Yes. He, I didn't think he was... Empathet- no, I the character's I, I, name is Mel A. Mute. <laughs> yes. I couldn't empath- empathise with him. I didn't really connect to him as a person. I, I, didn't, I wasn't really interested in what he was doing, and I don't care if he lives. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is brutal. And that's in a universe where everybody's the worst person in the world. Right, okay. You didn't think he, you didn't think he emoted well enough? He just he? looked like he was mad. <laughs> like like in an, an insane person, it's Alexander Skarsgård. Uh, that's the Stellan right, Skarsgård yeah. is his father, and the other one, and one he's the, the scientist from the Avengers. Yeah, right? and one of them's one of the Skarsgård kids is it. Is the clown. oh yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is the guy what who a died. Delightful acting yeah. family of Skarsgårds. This is the guy who died in the gasoline fight in the first Zoolander. He's oh, one wow. of the guys. There you yeah, go. yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Ooh, and I like him generally. I, I didn't mind him as Tarzan, uh-huh. but I just don't think this role really worked for him. Also, I think coming off the back of. Um, Altered Carbon, which had a lot more interesting uses of future technology. Uh, well, I was actually going to say, yeah. after the, I watched this and after that, I finally got started on Altered Carbon. Yeah. It is a much more interesting yeah. universe. Yeah. I mean, also, Altered Carbon has the luxury of being 10 episodes or whatever. And also, it's insane. Yeah. And it's insane, yeah. Like, I've, I've only... Brief digression. I've only just started Altered Carbon. There is already an artificial intelligence robot hotel... Oh, so good. That is that is staffed solely by an AI hologram robot man who looks like Edgar Allan Poe yes. and also controls a lot of like robot machine guns <laughs> yes, yeah. to defend his yeah to defend his uh his, pretty his hotel patrons. It kind of loses a bit of steam or it did for me at the end, uh-huh. but there's a lot of really interesting ideas. And a lot of butts. And a lot of butts. And yeah, some dicks. Big time. There's a few dicks, yeah, sure. You can mm. count them. Yeah. Count them on one hand. Could really count them on two hands. Oh. Uh, think about it. Keep me posted, Mason. How many dicks there are? Okay, okay. great. Anyway, mute. Uh, but what about you? What about it did work for you? I, I hate world, saying that because I really like Duncan Jones. I, yeah. I think the world was interesting. Like I think it was very well put together as a near future world. Sure, yeah. It felt like a realistic near future. It world. did. Like there wasn't ever a bit where I'm like, well, that's a shit green screen, or that flying car looks like crap. Yeah. Also, there's sometimes flying cars, and then there's none. For a lot of it. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, but anyway, sorry, go on. Uh you know what I liked? We briefly talked about because it's not really the the purview of this podcast but sure. we talk about three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. I've not seen it yet. Okay, well I th- I I think I mentioned when we talked about that briefly that that's just a movie that is just it's here's a few days or a few weeks. Yeah. in this universe of horrible people. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not necessarily supposed to like any of them 
or identify with any of them. It's just a story that unfolds and it happens. It's things happening and it make a you think or a bad person. And I feel like mute was something along those lines. Yeah, right. And I can definitely you're not say supposed that. to be like I love these characters and I totally identify yeah. them and I totally get this guy. It's more like this is we're just being inserted into this universe for a few days. Yeah, and this is a story that's being told and. I guess it made me think on some level, and I enjoyed that. The cat, yeah, well, and that's actually true because there are yeah. elements of this that that I found interesting. We're What's- segueing very quickly in your favourite segment as a father, as a father, as a father. How yeah, I was going to say I um, empathised most with the Paul Rudd character, uh-huh. and he's a really terrible person yeah, for right. multiple reasons. See, Can we go spoilers now. Yeah, like yeah. I think. Yeah, okay. Uh, spoilers. Yeah. Anyway, look, I uh, I'm going to say best movie ever only because I didn't think it was the worst movie ever. Mm. And I think there's there's something in it that I enjoy. Yeah, maybe we're going to need another. I, watch I can for see it. also. I can see why people would like it. Yeah, right. But it's absolutely not for me. But Paul Rudd, like, because the idea behind that character was that he just wants to get his papers to get out of Germany. Because there's a bit where I'm like, oh, this is set in Germany, which I thought was interesting. Uh-huh. Uh And he just wants to go back to the US with his daughter. And I was I was kind of rooting for this guy, even though he was a psychopath and he pulled uh, bullets out of out of mobsters for in his spare time in his basement or whatever. Yeah, right. But then there's moments where his best friend is clearly a pedophile and there's signs throughout the entire movie that he is and he just doesn't seem to care until he really cares and then he doesn't care again. Right. Uh-huh. It's really bizarre. Like this guy who I know they went through some stuff together because uh-huh. they were in war and, and whatnot. It's yeah, Justin right. Thoreau who yeah. actually puts in – they're both really good. Actually, yeah, they're see, both putting in really good That's I think another good yeah. thing about – and it, it, it is again, it's, it's – It should have been their movie, I guess. If yeah, yeah, and Paul, I, I mean Paul Rudd's – Character, I think I think it's a great performance insofar as you empathise with this character because he is such a bad guy, and you, it makes you think. Okay, well, there are people in life going through their yeah. own dramas and their own lives, yeah, and they are do you know they are doing the best they can to protect their own kind of thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, mm. and that's yeah, and that's what he's doing. But you find out at the end that because um, Mute's girlfriend goes missing, mm-hmm. I didn't think she was very good either. In it, I thought she was. Um, just like there, actory. Yeah, yeah, and it's sort of what it. It's you know we've talked about in the past about women in refrigerators. Yes, which is the trope. The comic. It's a. It's a trope that is in all sorts of fiction, but the name comes from an issue of Green Lantern, yeah. where in order to give the new Green Lantern some purpose in life, which one is they, it again? It's Kyle Rayner. Right. Yeah. They just give him a girlfriend that he has for like two issues, and then she is killed and then stuffed into a refrigerator by the bad guy. Just to be like, hey, I'm here and I'm a bad guy kind yeah. of thing. Just to give him some motivation to go and be a superhero kind of thing. But he does It's just a cheap device. No, I feel like this kind of was a cheap device, but they just took it out of order. Yeah, because it's you don't find out that she's dead until... The end. The end. And mm-hmm. it, it's also she is the mother of Paul Rudd's child. Yes. Which is kind of weird because they're all hanging out in the same universe in the same bars, but Mute never realizes that. Or is and, made yeah. aware of that. Uh-huh. Yeah. But she she attempts to tell him a couple of points. Yeah, right, yeah. So no, yeah. I buy that. I'm okay, okay with that. Fair enough, mm-hmm. yeah. Because yeah. I also... You've never met any of my kids. No, that's that true. I that know I about. know about also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there was also... I felt like he might also be simple. And I know that's not just because... He's Amish. He's Amish. Yeah, I think there's he was limited in a lot of ways as a, as a character because of his upbringing. And I don't know whether that was intentional, but that's how it felt to me. That yeah, this guy right. wasn't like people would be like, "You're a dummy because you're mute." But I think he wasn't the full dollar. Well, that's the way I took it. Right. Anyway, like he was incredibly quick to anger and he was slow to figure things out. Yeah, yeah. it did feel a little like that. Yeah, but I don't know whether that was intentional or not. Or that's just the way I, I read it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, but at the end. <laughs> um, Justin Throw is a, is a big old pedophile, and he's <laughs> one of the biggest pedophiles. One of the biggest pedoph- pedophiles in the universe. And there's there's scenes where he's sitting with Paul Rudd's character, and he's they're at a brothel, and Paul Rudd's there with his daughter, and Justin Thoreau's like, "Hey, how old are you?" And she's like, "I'm 22." And he's like, "Ah, just say you're 16 or whatever." And Paul yeah, Rudd's right. like, <laughs> "This guy." This guy. And I'm yeah. like, "Wait, what?" Because mm. also I thought maybe they were together at the start because there yeah, was also to say, there was that it? kind of. Um, and I was kind of hinted at. I don't know. I think that was maybe not the case, or maybe it was. I don't know. Mm. Were they? They might have been. I think they were. Point. Yeah. Anyway, I think they were just buddies having yeah. a fun old time. They just done a, been through a lot of like horrible stuff together or whatever. Uh-huh. It seems. But uh, yeah, I, I just and then Paul Rudd eventually figures out that he's got cameras 
in his practice where he makes robotic limbs for children. Yeah, right. And he's filming them in, in the change rooms and whatever. Mm-hmm. And he snaps, but then he's fine. He's like, let's drink. Yeah, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. What is happening here? Like, I mm. can't imagine a world where that would. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's the future, isn't it? But <laughs> It is the near future, it's isn't it? It is the near future. What was interesting was that this is a sequel to Moon, sort of. Yeah, it is the spiritual <laughs> successor, and we know that because there is a scene, is it on the, it's on TV? Yeah, it's on TV. Where we see the court case between Sam 20 from Sam Moon. Rockwells. Yeah. And they, Sam and Bell. Sam Bell is the name, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and they're attempting to reobtain their human rights, I guess. Yeah, it's it's it. a little bit unclear. Yeah. But apparently there might be another one of these. Yeah, um, I, I would absolutely watch another one of these. I don't know whether there will be, though, after, after yeah, this. It's yeah. A, but I also see, as I understand it, this, was, this Mute was going to be a movie that was going to get a cinema release, and then they sold it to Netflix. Is that? Yeah, probably. That seems to be. The- and I th- look, I totally get why, because like Blade Runner, yeah. it has a very meandering pace. Yes. And Blade Runner did not do well. And no. I think they were just like, and Blade Runner was really good. Yeah, <laughs> and it still didn't I think do well, I think they yeah. were like I think the studios were like, well, if we can get fifty million bucks for this to yeah. sell it to Netflix, we might as well do that because yeah. that's, that's and where also, this is going to go. They would have obviously seen it, and like this wouldn't have made us money back theatrically, I'd imagine. Yeah, I don't know because it doesn't have. It's missing something that Moon and Source Code had. Yes, I don't know what it is. I think it might be the protagonist, a big part of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like a compelling person to follow was a, was a big part of it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Also, I don't understand because he, he, he was raised Amish. Yes. And perhaps he didn't have the money for it, but he never got his vocal cords fixed. And then at the end, for some reason, Justin Thoreau gives him his vocal cords because he wants him to say sorry for murdering Paul Rudd. But even though Paul Rudd... He let Paul Rudd bleed out on the floor. Yeah, right. Exactly. And then the bit where, because he he's good at holding his breath, mm. because that comes back. Yeah, at the did, start, didn't it? He's yeah, just practicing holding his breath and practicing drinking water. Yeah, there's some really odd turns That's in this, isn't there? Yeah, I'm just, uh-huh. I'm just trying to. Because <laughs> I mean that 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 final sequence is very odd, in so far as he he gives he gives. Malay mute his his voice box back. Yeah, and then he's got him at his mercy. Yes, essentially with the voice, and he says, "Why don't you apologize to me?" And he's like, "I won't." Clearly, and then he just takes him on a trip. I didn't understand. Yeah, they why, go to a why bridge. Why was that? They go to a bridge because he's gonna throw him off, or he threatens to. Could have just killed because he opens the gate and all. It's not like he just happened to stop on this bridge. It seemed like yeah. he stopped there with the intention of throwing Mute into the water. Yeah, right. Which is kind of ridiculous because he looks like a guy who could swim for a hundred years. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? And also, he's got that basement where he's doing all sorts of illicit yes. surgeries yes. and nobody has found him yet, so I don't understand why. Look, this is kind of a plot hole, admittedly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. No, I don't know either. Mm. And this is, yeah, so there were moments like these I just couldn't... Yeah. I'm watching it and I just couldn't wrap my mind around why any of this was how we would got here. Yeah, right. You know right. what I mean? Like uh, Us two. Us two. Yeah, that happens to me quite often. <laughs> Every time you turn up on a yeah. Sunday, I'm like, what? How did we? How did we? <laughs> Ooh. But uh, no, I, I, I can't recommend this, unfortunately. And I would... The next thing that Duncan Jones makes... I'm a hundred percent there. Yeah, but like that, the, he would have to make something. He'd have to make a hundred bad things in a row for me to stop watching. His stuff. Yeah, right. I find him compelling as a human being, as a, and as a storyteller. But this just did not work for me. Yeah, right. Yeah. But do you think he'll get another chance after this? I hope so. Me I too. I hope so. He does. Yeah, definitely. I mean, War Warcraft. Even though a lot of people didn't like it, it did really well overseas. Yeah, right. Okay. You know? So, well, I guess maybe if, like, let's say this movie cost. It looks back about a $30 million. Right. Film. Well, let's say it cost $30 million to make yeah. and they sold it to Netflix for $50 million. Yeah. That's a movie that made $20 million. Yes. So I guess that's a win. Yeah. Well, that's you know what it. I mean. Exactly. That's so a- I guess he'll get another one. Uh, there's no budget here. There me. is no budget here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm, if I had to guess, I'd say 30, but I don't. I wow. do not know. Big call. Is it? Yes. <laughs> The biggest really call put you've myself ever made. on the line here. Yeah. Anything else about mute? Uh, 
No, but I, it was it was good to see Paul Rudd playing against. Yeah, Tyler no, absolutely. That was good. I completely agree. And Justin Thoreau is fantastic mm, in yeah. everything. Uh, have you watched The Leftovers yet? No, you should 100 percent watch that. Okay. He's really good, yeah. and that's a great some of show. It. I've seen some of it. Okay, you should watch all of it. Okay, watch all of it. Never stop watching it until okay. it's over. Oh, and then stop. Then stop. I'll okay. watch it again. I'll stop. Should we go to the next segment then? Let me think. Do I have any other thoughts about it? This hasn't obviously put you off Duncan Jones films. No, I don't think so, no. Yeah. It makes me want to go back and watch Moon and Source Code, which I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesus Moon's a good film. Isn't it though? Yeah, it's such a good film. Mm, good. But it's got that Sam Rockwell magic. That's I the know. Thing. That's a, a, that he's absolutely a, he's does. He's at like six. I, he's like a Sam Rockwell I six. I would watch the Sam Rockwell clone court case movie. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Maybe that's what the next one is. I hope so. Yeah. 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 Nice. But it, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Mm, good. Good stuff. Okay, let's move on to another segment. Okay, do you know what it's time for then? Oh, it's time for our segment, What We're Reading. What We're Gonna Read. Nice. I'm doing the thing. What are we reading today? Okay, well, I'm on board with Altered Carbon. That is just, that is, it's a little, it's, it's not, it doesn't seem... As cruel a universe as the Game of Thrones universe, which I think we discussed a couple of weeks back. But it's I'm pretty cruel. There's some cruel stuff. Okay, then great. Don't right, worry well, about that. How many are you in? Two. Yeah, there's way crueler stuff. Okay, great. Yeah, don't worry about that, Mason. Fan. We were worried it wasn't going to get real, real weird and real yeah. cruel. Yeah. Maybe no. it's just that it's it's cruel, but they've got guns, <laughs> and I'm, I'm more on board with it. Yeah, sure. I guess. You Good action un- sequences so far, which I'm liking a lot. Yeah, no, there definitely has great action sequences. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really good use of budget as well. Is it is it shapey? I mean, it's a TV show. Oh, yeah, so I guess that's well, true, I don't yeah. know what it costs. Oh, yeah, no, I sure, honestly yeah. have no idea. Uh-huh. But it doesn't look cheap at all, no, does it? No, it, it looks really good. doesn't. Yeah. Like, it looks like a film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I finally got to the uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates Black Panther Marvel oh, comics, which are really good, yeah. Two out of ten? More than that, I would say. 100 out of ten. Yes. Oh, that's, a, that's probably your biggest score yet. I know, right? It's good. But again, uh, what I've what I has made me realise is a couple of things. One, they've ta- like we were speaking about earlier, they've taken a lot of production design from this version of Black Panther for the uh, yes. movies, yep. like the dragonfly helicopters and oh, it's from the, the, like okay, the nanotech yeah. suit yeah, right. and all that sort of stuff. And the second thing that I picked up on, because the first Ta-Nehisi Coast Black Panther uh, trade paperback contains the first appearance of Black Panther in it, like the, the Stan Lee Jack Kirby one in Fantastic Four. And remember we recently we did that Caravan of Garbage, yeah, yeah. Black Panther. It's that origin. It's, the, it's that origin. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's the Stan Lee... That's the one that we did with Stanley. Yeah. It, okay, but it's the difference is that in the in the cartoon, mm. the Fantastic Four are flying about in their Fantastic Car, and they get sort of pulled to Wakanda by like you know vibranium magnetic energy or what oh, have you, and, they, and they're forced to fight the Black Panther. Oh, so they invade his turf, and that's yes. why he attacks them. Yeah, but in well, that makes more sense. Oh no, he he sort of he he drags them in. Oh, he does. Okay. There. But the um in the in the then that's done. Yeah, but in the Fantastic Four comic book. He gifts them like a high tech spaceship, like flying vehicle, and they like, okay, let's just take it for a spin. What's the worst that could happen? And then they get sent to Wakanda, and they're like, uh, what is this? <laughs> what tr- so they actually seem less dumb in the cartoon. Oh wow, which is quite the achievement. Well, it's from the sixties. Yeah, the cartoon. Yeah, I mean the the comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. But it plays better. I think it plays better in the comic because, yeah, again, it's the sixties. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, Tana Hizzy Coates run highly recommended. Speaking of something that plays well as a comic, Mason, yes. uh, our good friend Pete Ford, Pete oh, yeah, Hollywood yeah, yeah. Ford. Uh-huh. Uh, the second issue of Winter Dark is out this week. So Very you can nice. Find on Comicsology. It's W Y N T E R. Uh, it's great. I've read the whole thing. You've read the whole I've thing. I've read the whole thing. Yeah. I'm also reading it again, issue by issue, because I think it. I think it. It's weird because it, it plays differently than reading it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I think, think we've had this conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that's that's too, too yeah. as well. Yeah, but uh, because I was emailing this week, I'm actually going to catch up for a drink on Thursday if you'd oh. like to come, Mason. I'm at work, but that's well, fine. okay. You know, rescinded. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but uh, basically, he he sh- he shot this around to a bunch of studios a few years back as a you potential know, as, movie, as a yeah. movie, and it got picked up by one of the major studios. Um, I don't know whether I can say which, but. It did, mm-hmm. and he had Hugh Jackman on board. Am I allowed to say any of this? I don't know. Ask him, and then cut <laughs> it out later. <laughs> uh, but it's ba- better for, to beg for forgiveness <laughs> than ask for permission. But he was telling me about it and how we're one degree from Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yeah, but he was saying that because the story of it is uh, the the lead of it is a black kid who is kind of 
semi adopted by the Hugh Jackman Knight character. Uh huh. And that was the that was the point that he had trouble um, selling it to studios, and all of them were like, "This is not going to play with this lead, as with this black in the lead. No one's going to go out to see it. We're going to make the the knight the main character." Right. Yeah. And yeah. Th- he's he's got one quote here. He put it in his blog. No one is. They said this guy said no one is going to pay to see a black kid as a lead in a tentpole movie. This white knight, we can cast that. People will pay to see it. Make it about the knight, and we'll talk again after you make make my changes. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That hey, was Pete, under- maybe pitch it again. <laughs> yeah. Maybe pitch it this week, week real quick. So that was like. That was like four years ago. Yeah, as well. right. It really wasn't yeah. that long ago. Yeah, th- this isn't a this isn't a pitch meeting from the seventies. No. This is so so that might all change. Well, clearly, well after Black Panther, I oh, think we're going to sure, see yeah. some changes to stuff like that. Yeah. But do you want me to name the studio on the guy? Because I can. Yeah, do it. <laughs> no, I do it. <laughs> what else have I been reading? Uh, uh, Invincible know. wrapped. Oh yeah. Anyway, Winter Dark. I'll link it below. Yeah, check, check it out. out. It's great. great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Invincible? Yeah, it wrapped, it's done. How many issues was that? 120 or 4, something? 4,000, I think. Okay, great. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Beginning to end. There you go, right? It's, it's really good. Okay. Yeah. Really good wrap-up. Satisfying wrap-up. Yes. All the loose ends? There wasn't really any by the end. It's kind of like, it does a kind of time jump really far into the future and what happens. Harry Potter whatever. style. Harry Potter style, yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, it's it's great. It's, it's, it's a really good series and I really hope they don't botch the, the movie. Yeah, sure. But uh, I guess it doesn't really matter because the comic's still there. But, Correct. But yeah. But wouldn't it be embarrassing for you if, if you're like, hey, everybody, watch this Invincible movie. It's based on a great comic and then it's terrible. No, I would never and everybody's say like, James, you're an idiot. Uh, what? You, how, why'd, you, why'd you read this dumb comic for years? People say that about The Walking Dead because it's the same writer because it's a really good comic, but it's a shit show. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Speaking yeah. of, we got a Walking Dead caravan of garbage this week. Oh, my goodness. If you think it's the good Walking Dead game, you are wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah. And it makes, look, a little bit of sizzle. Uh, this, this caravan of garbage, uh, there's a little appearance from my arch nemesis in the, in the video. Absolutely, there is. My, yeah. my arch nemesis <laughs> makes an appearance. So if you'd yeah. like, if you'd like to, to see that be sprung upon me. Correct. Uh, it's then Mason's vanity. <laughs> that's right. It's a mirror. <laughs> no, it's, I think it's, it's one of my favorite video game ones that I've done. Great. I've done, we've done. Ben's editing at the moment. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but boy, what a game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's out Tuesday. Nice. Are you ready for the next segment? Yeah, letters. Yeah. Is letters the next one? Yeah, no, it is. It nice. always is. The classic one was letters, oh, letters. We love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. I know they're here right now. We're going to do letters. Uh, if you want to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter or Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com. All of these things will get you letters. Nice. Sent. Uh, do you want to do the letter first or do you want me to do Let's a tweet a letter. first? Oh, here's one that I saw. Uh, this is from Kyle Cox, mm-hmm. Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com. Uh, greetings from the USA. Hello. How would you feel about the MCU creating entirely new superheroes? Yeah. He says it's not a one to one comparison, but he was thinking of the way, like, Batman the animated series created such classic characters as Harley Quinn. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which is now like that character's twenty five years old now. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right. wow. But yeah. that's a character that they went, "Hey, let's." Is that an exception to Rather than, all yeah. the other garbage that has come out of every medium? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? In a way, sure. And you might, some might also suggest that that character has also fallen back into the garbage of all other forms. I don't. Of I'm not up to Harley Quinn. I don't know where. Right. Where's she at? No, I mean in Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah. No, that was all right. It was fun. We had fun with it. Mm, did we? <laughs> it was fine. We did a commentary. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> but right. uh, I'm, I'm open to that. I yeah. think at this point they're probably testing the waters of doing different things with existing characters. For sure. Uh, it's kind of... Does it seem like a bit of a roll of the dice to create a new comic book character at this point? In yes. The, in an established uh, universe? Because there's so much you can draw from. Yeah, isn't it though? Yeah, and instead of just being like, "Look, it's 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 Dog Boy or whatever," I don't know. It's, why did I go to there? That's not a good one, obviously. Because <laughs> you're looking at a dog and a boy. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. why you saw the dog and the boy, and you went Dog Boy. But I think um, you're lucky. Uh, we're all lucky. You didn't go microphone dog. <laughs> what about microphone dog? He's got he's got great hearing. You could listen in on the bad guys because <laughs> he's microphone dog. <laughs> but, 
It's just a microphone with dog's legs, yeah. right? Is that well, he says, doing? I think it'd be cool for the MCU to create a hero from scratch because it would mean that the audience would have no idea where the story was going. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because it's, you know, again, we we know all the events that are, com- you know, that are coming up. We know a lot of the time almost beat for beat where a lot of these movies and characters are mm. going. We know where Infinity War's gonna go. Yeah, right. We know, you know, what's gonna happen to Thor and we know where all the characters are gonna meet up just to be like, hey, we created this new character. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting to see where if you just went to Marvel Studios and said, give us something new, like what would they put what would together? They do? What's the origin of Phil Coulson? Is he oh, yeah, a TV creation? Yeah, he's but a TV he's not creation. like... Thor, you know what no, I mean? No, he's a, he's a yeah. shield agent. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So and he's, and he's kind of an amalgamation of a few characters. It yeah, seems yeah. as well, like yeah. existing characters. I guess that's true. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That's yeah. But we're talking we're talking costumed yeah, superhero. Right. And you're not, you're not even saying what if there's a new Iron Man and it's someone we've no, never I'm heard saying of. MCU yeah. like Marvel Studios. Where's your microphone, dog? Get yeah, exactly. Get get a microphone, dog. Like get. Get all the people, because I mean, and also like everybody who makes a mo- like a superhero movie, like they're an artist and they're a craftsman and kind of, yeah, right. and you're sort of lot, you know, a lot of the designs they're like, see this Iron Man in the comic books, yes, give me that, yeah, right, like ha- see how this suit looks, just make it look real, yeah, kind of thing. But to, to go, you know, hey, you probably do some designs in your spare time, you know, you show us what you got, kind of thing. I think that'd be really fascinating. Okay, do and you, it would result in a protracted legal battle where Marvel Studios then owned that character for the next fifty years, and they never got any credit or <laughs> or money for it. But still, it'd be nice to see, not, wouldn't it? I think you run the risk when creating a new character for, for a few reasons, but it's there hasn't even been that many characters in the last say twenty years yes. that have been that are that iconic from comics for sure. When you when you when you look at the sum total of comic book characters, most of the ones that we remember. Started in like the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh-huh. I guess. Do you know what I mean? Like you got your your spawns and your Harley Quinns and and then your your minor kind of characters. Uh-huh. But all the big ones kind of existed all the way back then. Yeah. Is any would it? People are really unwilling to uh, to accept a new comic book character. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, just yeah, just in the comics. Yeah. Do you think that would be different for the movies though? Because most people going in don't know who Ant Man is anyway. So what do they care if there's dog microphone? Yeah, right, exactly. You know? Well maybe it's a case of you get maybe it's a it's a character that's built on the charisma of the actor. Maybe it's like Like okay. Will Smith, Hancock. Will Smith Hancock, exactly. (laughs) Well maybe that character might that character may have even worked if they put it in the Marvel universe. Maybe. Yeah. (laughs) I mean almost certainly. I don't think that 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 there's more problems with that movie than just the, the character. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh-huh. potentially, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's not a bad idea, though, to base it around the actor as opposed to the idea. I just, I wouldn't even know where to start because a lot of people have said, what's your ideal comic book character that you would create? Yeah, right. Everything's being done. Yeah, and there's true. only slight variations. Yeah. I mean, every now and then you'll get something completely outside the box. Yeah. But a lot of the time, it's I like, mean, is. He can fly and he shoots lasers, but exactly, he's, he yeah. can also meld his mind with technology or whatever. Like, yeah, right. Mm. And sure, you know, maybe there's a crypto, the super dog, yeah. who's got heat vision and and you know he can fly and he's super strong and he's yeah. invincible, and super hearing, super hearing. Yeah, but but that's too much, isn't it? What if yeah. you what if you strip what that away? To write down? Back to basics. Just a dog. Just a dog. <laughs> that's super with super hearing. <laughs> but how would the dog have super hearing? He's not an alien. No. We'd have to think about it, obviously. We'd have to have some sort of... A, look, it doesn't matter. A we'll big think. ear. A big ear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a dog with a big human ear on its back. Exactly, right. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Kyle. Kyle. Mm-hmm. Got a tweet here from Josh. I'm ready. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Do you guys think we'll get an explanation of how the Infinity Stones on Earth got here? Like the Tesseract being in a wall. It wasn't a wall. <laughs> it wasn't a wall, wasn't it? It was. It really yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, was that the only one that was on Earth? Uh, the Soul Stone's probably in v- That's Wakanda. Right. Where are the other ones? Meteor. Meteors. Uh, I just assumed it was Nordic and it came oh, the, down. Oh, the, the Time Stone. Yeah. No, yeah. Was that the... No. The, 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 the Eye of Agamotto. No, the... The, oh, there's that also, yes. yeah. Oh, they probably jumped in from another dimension or some shit. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Gonna jump? No, they can't jump dimensions, can it? I reckon probably somebody stole that. Somebody's who? Agamotto. 
Yeah, he probably did, didn't he? Yeah, uh-huh. That's a really good point. Yeah, because they can jump anywhere, yeah. can't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where are the other ones from? The the Mind Stones from Space, like yep. you brought that down. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one from Thor that's filled with blood, it was in, stuck in another dimension and Natalie Portman found it somehow. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Do you mm-hmm. think maybe Earth is kind of like a... Oh, are you saying like the, the larger point? picture of why they keep ending up on Earth? Yes. Ah. Oh. Like, is, is, is the Earth some kind of focal point in the galaxy inexplicably no i think it's just a coincidence it's just a coincidence it's just a coincidence yeah okay because otherwise the world the universe would have ended millions of years ago right you know what i mean it's mm. just a co- like they've just been flying all about the universe who the the infinity gems mm. and they've just happened it, they've just, it's just ha- it's just a weird coincidence that they've all happened to appear at this point and i guess they also haven't appeared exactly at the same time yes mm, probably mm. Mm. It's interesting though. Isn't I don't. Though? I don't think they'll explain it. Really make you think? No, I don't think. That. I think. Look, I think it's all been su- sufficiently yeah. discussed in in. It's it's been su- sufficiently revealed. Maybe Thor can one get, was in a wall. Thor can get back in that vision pool and he can explain it to everybody. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. This is from Dan. Uh, I think I'll have to wait. I think you'll have to wait for it to come on Netflix. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on Annihilation. I'm conflicted. I really want to see that movie. When is it out here? Uh, Netflix in like three weeks or two, two or three weeks. It's the guy who did um, fucking Arrival, the Robot Lady, Ex Machina. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, cool. Yeah, and he also wrote Sunshine, which is your favorite movie. It's your favorite movie. It is, and it's a good movie. It's both of our favorite movies, and that's what that's, that's why we get along so well. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> uh, what the hell is that guy's name? The the director. Danny Boyle? No, okay. he directed it, but he didn't. This guy wrote. The guy who wrote Alex Garland, was it? Yeah, it's Alex Garland. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he's everything that he's done is super interesting. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to know what he's up to. He wrote Twenty Eight Days Later, I think. Okay, right. Yeah, so he's done a bunch of stuff. I'm just going to look at his IMDb. Is that cool, Mason? Do you mind? <sighs> All right. Okay, here we go. As long as he's cool with it. He's writing the Halo movie. Okay. Uh, he wrote the Devil May Cry video game from 2013. Oh, he wrote Dread. Oh, okay. This guy's doing all right. Yes. I oh, did a Batman Black and White. Uh, he wrote Sunshine. He wrote the, <laughs> the novel called The Tesseract. And he wrote 28 Days Later and the novel The Beach. Oh, oh yeah, he did too. I That's right. That. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So he's two for two in terms of directing uh, Ex Machina Annihilation. I've heard nothing but good things and like it's crazy and scary and fun and weird and horrible. Okay, and, wow. uh, but I don't know any specifics All and right. I just want to watch it not knowing anything. Nice. All right. Yeah. Three weeks. Hopefully. Yeah, Here we'll do, we go. We'll do an episode on it because I think it's only out in the US theatrically and everywhere else it's gone to Netflix. Nice. So there you go. Okay. Is there any other questions, Mason? That's every question we've been asked this week. Is that true? No. Okay. You don't need, You don't want to dip back into the mailbag? or are we... Not currently, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, well, I won't make you, Mason. Okay. It's not like we're getting paid to do this anymore. We are. We get sponsorship. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, you'll get some of the money someday. It's just, it's in a little separate bank account waiting for you. Oh. (laughs) Can I get like a card or something to access It's when you're older. Oh, okay, cool. (laughs) Cool. 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 Yeah. Great. All right. Uh, That's the show for this week, I guess. Sure is. A little bit of a shorter one. Hope you don't mind. Uh, Next week will be Tomb Raider. Is it really? Maybe. Let me check. Okay. Uh, I do know the embargo for Tomb Raider is Thursday mid, sorry, Wednesday midnight of the day that it comes out. Okay. So I don't know whether that's good or bad for Tomb Raider, but uh, there's been some screenings and apparently it's, some people have said, no, it's, it's fun. Oh, imagine if we got a good one. <laughs> Just imagine. I don't think it's going to be, I think it'll be, but, oh, sorry, it's 15th of March. It's a few weeks away. Okay. So well, it's something that- else next week, if you don't mind, Mason. I thought there was something out next week. Do you want me to check Hoyt Cinemas? Yes, please. Do you want me to check Village Cinemas? Yes, yeah, check Village Cinemas. Okay, good. Hang on. Apparently, um, Game Night's really good. That has Justin ba- Jason Bateman. Jason Justin Bateman. Nice. Yeah. So I think that's that's it. I, would, I didn't think that would be the case. Interesting. In, uh, interested in Peter Rabbit? No. What about Monster Hunt 2 Mandarin? No. What about Operation Red Sea? No. What about the Monkey King 3 Kingdom of Women? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe there is nothing out next okay. week. We could, we could watch the Monkey King 3 Kingdom of Women. <laughs> we could, but will we? We won't. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
That's the show for this week. Do the rest of the show, Mason. Oh, yeah. Thanks to I'm everybody. I'm out of here. You know what? I'm doing it up top. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We yeah. really appreciate it. That's how you get a show. That's true. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just two idiots shouting in a room with a dog. I mean, we do it anyway. But- <laughs> If you want to listen, that's that's real super cool. cool. Thank man. you for subscribing and liking it and telling a friend. Yes, many friends. Tell all your friends. Thank you for voting and us. And if you don't like it, tell your enemies. Uh, <laughs> thank you for voting us as the best podcast. That would be great if Australian you could vote for us in podcast whatever that award thing is. Awards. Very nice. Yes. Uh, let's see. If you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Yep. You can click on our Amazon affiliate link. Correct. And buy some stuff on Amazon. We just need one person to buy like a like a combine harvester and on, then that would on Amazon like and we would be sorted forever. 10K or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, That'd be terrific. I could put it in your separate bank account and you could get it in 15 oh, years. I get my combine <laughs> harvester money. That'd be so exciting. Uh, if you want some t-shirts, we've got them on tpublic.com. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, thank you to The Brute and The Basilisk and Rackham for all our, all our great themes. Correct. It's about it. Yeah. Uh, next week, Dunno. Dunno, something. Request though. topics. I could. saw on the Reddit, people were request, were making some ideas. We've got some good stuff. Got a lot of really good ideas. Nice. For people. That nice. people have done. But maybe they'll release another Netflix show and we'll just do that. Yeah. Who knows? All right, Mason. I feel like this has been real low energy. Is that cool? I think it's been very high energy. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we have different perspectives, don't we? Okay, hang on, I'm just going to stop. For, I'm just going to look up something real quick. What are you looking up? Just Tell a me. thing. What are you looking up? All right. Just a bloody thing. You're typing right? boobs into Google again, Mason. Uh, no. Uh, I don't believe you. Oh, yeah, this is something before, just before we go. Yeah. Last week, we might make this an ongoing thing, but um, we asked the listeners to tweet at us. To do our impression of Professor X. Oh, right. If we could both do our impression of Professor X. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, Where are we at? What do we got? Let's see. Uh, okay. So they've, they've brought in, the people have tweeted at us scenario suggestions. Yeah. Uh, so this is Judd at Judley Bear on Twitter. How many are we doing this week? Just one? One each, I think. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, Professor X is in the bathroom and needs Logan to quickly bring toilet paper. This, this is for you. What? I this bet you have an easier one. Oh, well, I'll find it. I'll find a really difficult one. Okay. Hang on. Logan! <laughs> Pretty what good. What was that like? No, that was good. Uh, Don't me to find you one. Okay. No, no, you just pick one. Okay. It's fine. Uh, let's see. Okay. So uh, this is from Cole Krauss. It's Cole Krauss on Twitter. Uh, Professor X trying to get Logan's attention as he's walking out the door after finding out Professor X is having another man's baby. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many layers to this. A lot this. of layers. So I what to convey in one word. Yeah, right. Okay. You can do this. Okay. <clears throat> Logan. <laughs> it was like remorse. Yeah. There's yeah, a yeah. lot in that. Yeah, I yeah. was expecting anger and you went a different way. Oh, wait, I can, I'm, really I'm going to shake I it out. I thought that I'm was really out. good. All right, all right. No, because Professor X is having the other man's baby. Yeah, yeah. Logan's so, walking out. Yeah, but that's why he's like, we had something. Okay, and, here we go. Yeah, yeah I get you. Logan, it's much the same. But <laughs> no. I think, yeah, you had your hand up in that yeah, one. I did, right? Yeah, it's right. It was a little act out. It helps, I think. Yeah, anyway. definitely. Anyway, we'll do a couple more of those until we if forget. You got suggestions. Until we forget it's a thing, and then yeah, we'll stop right. doing it. That's right. Which will probably be very soon. That's the show for this week. But thank you, everybody, for listening. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want, it's up to you.